Hi there, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Rolfe. I'm Head of Technology and Innovation at Highbury College. Um, I also serve another role. Um, I'm also Chair of the Technology and Innovation Committee as part of the 157 Group. And for those people not in the further education arena, the 157 Group is a bit like the Russell Group. Um, it was set up to influence the sector of the largest, most prestigious, quality further education uh, providers in the country to try and push forward uh, change and um, things like that. So basically, uh, that's my role. Um, Highbury College, uh, contrary to most people's thinking, is in Portsmouth, not in London. So we do have visitors, visitors and turn up in London and not in Portsmouth. Um, we've got five centres in and around Portsmouth, so we're, we're quite a, a, a large college. Um, in 2011, um, Ofsted um, ranked us grade one and rather interestingly I had the opportunity to meet the Ofsted inspectors and um, show them our Helix Media Library and they were quite taken back by the Helix Media Library and if anyone has any experience of inspectors they do something called triangulation so what they do is they listen to the management tell them all the stuff they want to hear and then they go off and find out if it's true and talking to students so as part of the student body they went to talk to the students and say you know how do you access your learning content? And uh, one of the carefully primed students there said, yes, I use the Helix Media Library, or, or we call it iVideo, to access my learning. It's really, really great. I can access it 24-7 from home and anywhere. So it's great that our students actually reinforced our thoughts that this, this technology is being used. Um, the background to this was we put together a plan for a shared services project uh, funded by the Skills Funding Agency. And a lot of people, when they talked about shared services, they were thinking about HR, thinking about finance, IT. And I had this wacky idea of what about shared services around curriculum? Um, curriculum development, curriculum delivery, um, sharing curriculum technologies. So I put together a bid with uh, my 157 colleagues um, for, I think it was about 350,000 uh, pounds. And we got the bid, which was fantastic. And the particular strand that uh, this relates to um, is around uh, the shared media library and lesson capture and off-air recording. And uh, Tony's going to talk a bit more about the technology and how it hangs together. Uh, but what we did essentially was we purchased a TV recording solution, the Omni server, which is housed at Hybrid College in our data centre, which then the 157 group colleges connect to and download the content. So it's a bit like a cloud service, basically. So the advantage of this is that we've only ever had to purchase one and 10 colleges have benefited from it. Each college then has their, their local HTML so they can control the content, what they do with it. Um, and then the next phase of the project, which we're not quite there with yet, is we're gonna have a shared content repository in the form of iTunes U. So that colleges will then pick the content they like, which is uh, they're happy to share, and that's going to go off to I iTunes U. Um, what we've proven is, by using this technology and this collaborative approach to working, is we're starting to see some real-time savings, which is quite good for us, particularly as we're having people within institutions collectively working together, one, to solve problems to install the, 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 the kit, but more importantly, to pedagogically, it's a word I can never really say, um, work together about how this technology can work. Now, around the lesson capture stuff, if I could talk for a, a few minutes, what we've done at Highbury um, is we've installed fixed cameras in our A-level academy. So what we've done is there's a, a ceiling camera, there's a ceiling microphone, and a lecturer walks in, turns the computer on, hits that record button, no things to set, no levels to worry about, no cameras to set up, um, and off they go. That lesson's recorded. Um, it's important to note that the teacher can choose not to record themselves, and many of our staff, our early adopters, don't want themselves recorded. They're happy for their voice, they're happy for the content, but they don't want themselves recorded. So they can switch that feature off. Equally, um, they can use document cameras as well. So when we talk about video capture, it's, it's video capture of any video device. So that's really quite important. And one of the areas that I'm really interested in taking the Cantasia relay technology is into science. 
because STEM is a really big thing and HE and FE. And I'm thinking to myself, how cool would it be if you have a digital uh, uh, microscope with some slides, with some things wriggling around on, you could have a, a tutor talking about it and recording that content. I don't think I need to say anything more about that, to be honest. Is that you, Mr. Marva? So that, that's basically the crux of the project. And Tony's going to sort of talk a bit more now um, about um, how the solution hangs together. Um, what we're interested in doing as a college, as, an, as a network, we're interested in looking for people in the room who are at the similar sort of stages that we are um, to sort of join up and look at these sorts of technologies and how they can be really used to impact teaching and learning. And there's also some other issues that we're working out. So things like having signage in these classrooms that says that your class may be recorded, please notify your tutor if you don't want to be recorded, and things like that. There's a lot of legal things that we need to try and work out. There's lots of sort of moral implications. There's lots of contractual implications that if a teacher leaves the organisation, do they have a right to say that the, all their content's got to go? So there's lots of things we're looking at and working with people on um, to try and uncover those bits. So if anyone's interested in having those sorts of discussions, uh, please grab me or grab my email address. Happy to do that. There we go, technical bits done. Uh, okay, so I'm Tony from Audiovisual Southwest, um, predominantly an AV company, um, but we sort of got involved in all this AV and IT, and, uh, and we're kind of a streaming reseller, but in the AV market. So Paul came to us with this kind of harebrained idea for the 157 and said, right, okay, we want to we wanna do this streaming, we want to do lesson capture, we want to do live TV all together. And we kind of had to look through various different solutions. Um, we did look at some other streaming products, um, none of which really came up to the bill um, because we, they already had Media Library, because it's Media Library, and quite a few other people in the project already had, had uh, Media Library. Then we looked at Lesson Capture, and there's a wealth of different products out there on the market for that. There's some that use hardware boxes, there's some that use software boxes. We looked at a few. And then we discovered at the time that streaming, we're looking at integrating Camtasia Relay. Great, investigated the product, seemed like the right thing to do. We then needed to do this shared repository. How are we gonna share media between 10 different colleges? Initially, we thought, okay, well, we'll just do one big HML in the cloud so that everybody can get to it. Had a chat with these guys and they all went, whoa, we don't wanna do that. <laughs> This is going to be a data center nightmare. We're no big YouTube. So then we started thinking about it, and we realized, of course, iTunes U was out there. HML, of course, integrated with iTunes U nice and easily. So 157 went away, and we set up our own 157 iTunes U account. And theoretically, everybody is then feeding into that and sharing their content. Then TV, well, that was a fairly obvious choice being we were heading down the road of Helix Media Library. Hybrid already had the one LAN Omni server. So that solved that problem. Here we are, Omni, Omni server from one land. We kind of went to stream, what do they offer us? This is the bit where I make their heads all big. Um, but it was a robust, good looking, pr good looking product from the media library. It was popular amongst the, pr the project group. When we went to a, a seminar uh, and sort of discussed it with everybody, there was a general nod of head around the room when, when we talked about the Helix media library, it was well known. Camtasia Relay integration, obviously. Um, ability to in integrate with the one LAN. But, also, but then the next one was the UK-based support. So many of these lesson capture products and, and streaming products were supported in the US, supported in China, supported in places where you just can't talk to the guy. And we needed a situation where we could have some involvement in the way the product was developing. So UK was great. So technically, what did we have to do? Well, at the time when we started looking at this, was over a year ago, we were back at the previous version to HML, 
didn't include some of this stuff, so we had to work with these guys to get the Camtasia relay working correctly. Um, and there's some odd bits with the, um, with the Omni server to get that working correctly. And then we started looking at Camtasia Relay. Now, uh, Chris has obviously already been through Camtasia Relay this morning, but just to give you a little bit more of in depth as to how that works, you have the application, which you all saw this morning, on the desktop, but in each instance there has to be a server as well behind that application. So for each of these 10 colleges, then we had to install a server with the main server-based client sat on that. Um, the mobile device, which Chris showed you earlier again, that is talking to that server. So in each one of the instances of the 10 colleges, we had to make sure they had HTML server and this Camtasia relay. Now, just because Chris had a little bit of trouble earlier with Fuse, I'm just gonna do another quick Fuse test. We'll come back to that earlier. So it's time to um, smile and what have you. So I'm hoping to show you this in, in all of its glory of integrated bits. It is. I mean, when, when we started presenting this, and we presented it at several different colleges to staff, the, the app that sits on your, uh, on, on your PC is, is all well and good. It's fine. There's plenty of uses for it. But actually, you show people the Fuse application on the mobile, and it suddenly brings this whole new world. It initially, you think, okay, field trips, that kind of thing. Then some people came to me and said, well, you know, we're doing science labs and that kind of thing, and they're thinking about putting cameras in the ceiling, lots of cameras everywhere gets very expensive very quickly. But there's one college that's actually just using them, recording a science lab. Because yeah, you only want short excerpts of video. You don't want to be recording 45 minutes. And this is one of the things we found out doing lesson capture, is it, it appears not to work very well if you record a whole 45 minutes. What you want to record is short excerpts of information. And so the students just grabbing hold of these, it's so easy to use, the big red button. I think we've all said the big red button with Fuse, but that's what it's all about. Which is, which is one of the things we needed for all these colleges is, is this seamless user experience to make it, and, and I'll show you the, that video in a second. So mobile capture. Um, then the TV side of things, we wanted to make this exactly cloud-based, exactly as we said, which we had a problem then because the system's designed to take Omniserver TV, exactly how, how most of you do it at the moment, and push it into an individual media library. We needed to get this out to 10 colleges how are we going to do that? We came to these guys at streaming and said, listen, we need a custom bit of software here to do this. And we worked with them and we've developed something now called the Media Broadcaster, which Rob might show you a bit later on, or it's been talked about. So effectively, we can take that TV file and we can now distribute it out to as many places as we need to via FTP. So for this project, they're getting shared TV. So somebody logs into the server, picks they want to record Panorama, and every college gets a version of that panorama, and then they can then manage whether they want to keep it or dispose of it ho however they want to. The idea really is to build up this big library of, of off-air TV content. Um, so just quickly review where we're at. There's still commissioning going on. Some of you are involved in the project that are here. We've still got bits of commissioning going on. It's by no means a fully operational project yet. We're getting there slowly as we carry on. Um, I think it's safe to say, Paul, that everybody's commented so far with certainly Camtasia Relay how simple it is to use. It's, it sounds a bit like a sales pitch, but actually when, when we've looked at all the different, camp, um, different lesson capture systems, this one really has so many benefits. And, and it's not just lesson capture as well, we found that we, we did an event with some support staff and we showed them this and they kind of walked in the room and went, well, I don't really want to do this, this is lesson capture. But actually the support staff, staff suddenly realised that they could use it for training staff training. They could sit in front of their, their PCs and the webcam. They could do training videos about some of their processes that they did in their everyday job. There was somebody from um, timetabling. So she had a process that she needs to pass on to other people almost monthly. And she said, this takes up hours of my time. 
And now she's using Camtasia Relay. She records this process once, and it's just on and on again. But many support staff found it useful. And I think, as, as Paul picked up uh, earlier on, we've, we installed these cameras in the sixth form. Um, this, it's important to realize that the Camtasia Relay will, it, it will notice any Windows registered video device. Okay, so when you plug something into the USB, providing it registers as a video device, you can record it. So that includes capture cards, okay, not just your webcam. So you can, you can then get video in from, from anywhere. Um, I think th the next thing in our roadmap with it is expanding use. We're trying to investigate ways of, of how we get users to use this and promote it, um, which Paul, Paul's the man for that, really. He's working very hard. Um, and just exploring collaborative working, really. So I, I'm just going to very quickly show you that fuse, um, which Chris struggled with a little bit earlier on. So this is the media library at Highbury, iVideo. So down here somewhere we have Lesson Capture. Okay, I haven't made it there yet. Okay, that test is one I did sat there a few, a few minutes ago to make sure it got there okay. Um, so the one that we did a second ago hasn't made it. Let me just see. This is me trying to demonstrate easy to use and it doesn't work. Oh, it hasn't gone anywhere. Okay, we're no, no, never do live demos. I think we're at the mercy of the Wi-Fi here. It's probably because it's sat on the on, on our SAP. But I exactly as Chris showed earlier on, what that does with no user intervention, it passes from the mobile device, it uploads it to the server at, at the relevant college, and puts it straight in the media library. big red button. Do you have to actually log in to get a big red okay. button? Yes. So the um, relay itself, the server, um, links up with your Active Directory, LDAP. Okay. So the both the desktop app and the Fuse app talk to the server HTTPS. Okay. 443. Um, there is then in, in the settings here, basically, you have to put in the server so it knows where to go and look at it, and you put in your AD username password, and it does the authentication over the 443. So only users, effectively, that are on your AD who have authenticated can, can use it. And that's the same for the desktop app as well. So where Paul said users can download the desktop app and use it on their machine at home, they can because talk to the s server HTTPS, they log in with their, with their AD, takes them there. How, how would you then get the video inside, say, Blackboard? Okay, so on, once the video's created, it's delivering it into the media library up there, automatically delivers it into a category, and at that point then you just do the standard media library link into Blackboard, the same as you would with any other video. Okay, thanks. got people that make cakes in the, t in the catering department, we've got people that build brick walls, we've got, you know, maybe in the science department people have to dissect hearts, but we're actually looking at how this technology can be used to record evidence of work. Uh, because you can download to mobile devices, which most, most of the, 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 the students have, uh, we're just sort of looking at these different models, and I think this is where this sort of technology gets quite exciting from my perspective. And, and so, so many of these uh, um, lesson capture systems are so difficult to use. We've looked at a lot of them, and some of them you have to click a thousand buttons for, for advanced features and things, whereas this is so simple. The big red button I mean is all you need. I'll I would say I am a little bit of an expert on video capture systems, and I've, how many ha I've actually had one or two already at, at Highbury. Um, a lot of them are very expensive, require lots of hardware, expensive consultants to come in, um, <laughs> but the thing about Camtasia, it is so cheap and it, it works and 
Um, you know, certainly with the 157 colleagues that are here who are installing it, hopefully in six months' time, once they got, you know, they've had the use of it, they'll be able to sort of talk about their feedback. I'd like to point out I am not sponsored by TechSmith or Helix um, <laughs> at the moment, um, but you know, I, I, you know, we have used a, a, a very large lesson capture system that's uh, prolific in the states, um, and it was rubbish to be honest. It, it didn't yeah, work yeah. properly. Support was rubbish, um, but this this does work. I think, I mean, that, that, that's, what, that's what we're saying here, really, is, is the elements that Chris has described to you earlier on this morning, we managed to put all of those together and we've successfully made them work and on a fairly significant scale as well. Um, how, because how, how in, in my experience of these things, it's, um, the technology's great, it's getting people to use it. <coughs> so what I find when I go, the most successful customers that we have, not just for Relay, but HML and all that sort of stuff, they they run trainer training and all that, and, it, and it's it's a process by which it's not just like, bang, this is the technology, use it, and it always goes well forever and a day. There's a constant kind of process. How important was doing the trainer training with the Relay stuff? Can I answer that one, and then yeah. you can fill in? Okay, yeah, 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 go, go on. Yeah. As a flight aside, um, Toby installed... Um, a digital signage solution for us. And every time he came down, he said to me, Paul, you've just got PowerPoint slides on it. Your solution could do much more. Um, after six months, it, it took adoption. And it was very much like our media library. Uh, we installed it, and the first six months, it hardly got used. And then we had a couple of adopters. One of them so much that actually got uh, uh, called Nadtube. The guy was called Nadine. He put so much content on there that it almost became his. And then he was sharing it with other people, and other it. people told them. And I think it's about the culture of your organisation. The culture of my organisation is if, um, as a manager, I go, you will use this tool. They won't use it. So I don't do that. I tell them they can't use it. Um, but no, more important, but seriously, what we do is we get a few early adopters, those enthusiasts that are going to go away try it out, feedback to you and go, do you know what, that doesn't quite work and that. Get that, get, get that feedback, they then pass it on and then it trickles, it then trickles out. And then, but, tr but going back to the original question, <laughs> training is really important. And Tony, I mean, you can talk about the experience of the recent training you've done at Highbury. Yeah, I, I think we've, be because now we've got this whole solution in place, and it's taken a while, exactly as Paul said, it, take, it takes a while to build up. I think when Rob and Chris first said to us it would take two years, we kind of went, really? Uh, and indeed, it has taken two years, there's no question about it. And, and we see the whole collaborative lesson capture probably taking another two years before it's really fully been used well. Um, but we started to push training, haven't we? Now we've got it all using, I've been invited to Highbury, we've been doing staff training sessions, we've been taking them in, we've been having some quite good fun with, with, with doing lesson capture, recording crazy things in, in training sessions, but actually it's just getting them using it. And, and funny, we, we looked actually just the other day to in the lesson capture folder and we kind of went, hang on a minute, some of these people in the training session last month have just suddenly used it and we've had no further input, um, which was, was re really good for us. But there is also this thing about the quality of it. There's, there's, there's a lot of discussion going on am amongst different parties about the quality of the media recording. And I think we're, we're pretty certain that in the early stages of this, it almost doesn't matter what the quality of the recording is, providing you get people using it. If they're recording it, it's a little bit rough, it's a bit, it doesn't matter too much because they're using it. And the more they get to use it and realize actually, it's okay, it's not full of IT bugs, it's not a nightmare, it's not gonna take them hours to make it work, they'll use it. And, and that seems to be what's happening, doesn't it? Just to reiterate, you're talking about the quality of the the, 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 um, the video recordings, not the quality of the content, aren't you, Tony? Yes, yes, sorry, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's actually a mixture, and um, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but there was a piece about 12, 14 months ago about a professor in, um, I'm sure it was in Scotland somewhere, in Edinburgh, I think it was Edinburgh, that basically she recorded her whole lesson in natural, so it got to a halfway, and she'd go, right, okay, I'm stopping now, go and have a cigarette break, have a cup of tea, and she kept it running, and naturally that's when people watching would then go and stop and have a cup of tea and a break. And because it wasn't that sort of hour of content, 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 and by the way, you know, people lose interest, it, 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 she found it worked really well. So I think either you've got to do it that way or you've got to do small five, ten minute chunks, mm. in, in my experience. And, and I think, go on.
That, that, that's I essentially exactly what it does. It takes your desktop from, from whatever machine you're using, if you're using the, the PC app or the Mac app, it takes the desktop, it will take a window from a camera and it will take the audio that's going into it, record it all together and output it as a video file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely, oh, sort of less than capture stuff. Yeah, I don't know whether it's in, you know, the demo material. Yeah, no, that's fine. Totally, I, I, you know. I think I'll, 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 I'll find <laughs> something. I was just going to set him <laughs> off. When, when we started out the project, some of the idea behind it was based upon the US Flipped Classroom model, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. When we started out the project, some of the idea behind it was based upon the US Flipped Classroom model, wasn't it? Yes. Do you want to take that further? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the idea was, uh, around that, was that we would, students would go away, do all the, technical learning at home or in the, the library and then basically only come into college to do the sort of having a chat, doing the, 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 the um, seminar type work and using the videos as a mechanism to try and learn from. And I wanted to try this interesting um, experiment. So our programming lecturer, he did a short course on how to program in C Sharp. And I thought to myself, right, okay, I know nothing about C Sharp programming. Um, I'm going to actually give this a go myself and see if I can learn C-sharp programming. And um, I started off doing this um, Monday evening at home, watching it on my um, iPhone, and um, I picked up C-sharp programming. So I am now a C-sharp programmer. No, I'm not that good, but um, it, it was, it, it, it worked. I'm not saying it's the, the performance that worked for everything, but um, it, it certainly worked for some applications. Okay, so I'll try and show you a couple of examples. It might take me a couple seconds to flip through. So okay, so obviously we're stuck with audio of the laptop here, but so this is a guy who's working on his laptop. He's obviously recording this demonstration that he's about to do from his, his laptop window, and that's his video window. And we've got the audio all at the same time. If uh, I'll just stop this a second, I was just trying to find um, trying to find an example from one of the rooms that we've got capture into. Okay. If I were Nad. That's what exactly what I'm looking for. He has, yeah. Basically, he was using a flip camera yeah. just to yeah. record that and then upload it. So. Yeah. And now I think you know with with relay and with, with stuff to this point, obviously a lot more polished. Sorry, go up, Tony. Just just as a, just you can scroll up just quickly. Oh, sorry. One of the things my team did, and I don't sure sure how legal it is. So I'm going to have to remove this. Um, was they attended a Citrix seminar? Um, but oh. unfortunately, as uh, IT support people, we don't get a whole hour to sit and watch a Citrix seminar. They got called away, so we actually started to record it using Camtasia. So he, he was recording a web seminar <laughs> from <laughs> another system. If you scroll down. Oh, sorry. Um, there, Citrix with Link. So that was a presentation someone was delivering on the web, which he just used that as a screen capture tool to record that content. So um, it, it shows the versatility of the product. And the good thing about it is you can actually get a, a free demo of the product and download it for free for a trial period. So um, it is zero risk. I'm still trying to find one of these NAD ones. I'm not sure. The sub what's the subject? It's maths, isn't it? Yeah. Right, there we go. Yeah, it's just going from there. Yes. To be, to be honest with you, we are in our thinking stages. We're not in the doing stages of it yet. Right. One of the challenges we've got around it is that I wouldn't want student content then going on there for everyone to be able to 
to look at to plagiarise. So the comment earlier about having sort of user areas on there was something I'm quite interested in. Um, the other thing you can do with um, Camtasia Relay is set up different profiles. So you could actually output to YouTube, you could out output to a file system. So you there are some different options. And that's what we're trying to explore at the moment. So you know, students using the tool just to basically output into the, their user area and then they can upload it into their portfolio or however, that, however we want to do it. So it's an area we're interested in certainly exploring and certainly to other people in the room that are, are, are looking to do this, then to get in contact because I think it could be really, really um, rich and help with assessment. I mean, the, the system integrates with Camtasia Relay I exactly as we've described. Camtasia Relay has got more powerful tools built on as well that we're not currently using within the integration model. You know, for instance, there is a, an encode format that outputs to Camtasia Studio. So you can take a Camtasia Relay recording, raw format, pop it into Camtasia Studio, then you can edit it and do all, all the other things you can do with Camtasia Studio. You can take it out in a pile of other formats as well. It gets a bit complicated, um, but the product is able to do it. Um, so it's sort of all within the same the, the same cost model, really. That um, one, that's done by a flip camera. Oh, that's flip, is it? Oh, that's right. So that's what Nav oh. was using. He was using a flip camera just to <laughs> record the content, upload it manually. Um, so the content of that wasn't particularly great. Should I do it, Tony? Go on, if you know where it is. Off you go. So that's just basically a very crude example of me um, actually showing our principle how the technology works, you sat in the audience. And what we do as part of our solution is we've got a microphone installed in the ceiling and we provide the microphone to pick up all the conversation. So if a student puts a question in, um, then it gets picked up. Um, and that obviously doesn't ha you don't have the problems with these things everywhere with batteries getting lost and things like that so that's why this whole fixed solution for us worked really really well and I think the camera was 120 quid and the microphone was about another 120 yeah, quid. Yeah we, so we, we look, we look for a low cost thing. model in terms of product because yeah. it, it was about barriers to entry to get this used and so we obviously do not want high equipment costs so we've, we've tried and, and it's, it's proved well using high-end CCTV cameras a reasonable quality mic in the, in the ceiling or back to a standard video capture card I in a PC and then on, onto Camtasia Relay. Um, but it, and, and putting the microphone in the ceiling, getting the cameras in the ceiling was about this barrier to entry as well. You know, here today we've been faffing around with microphones and things and it was important to us that mm. staff didn't have to have radio mics, the students didn't have to have radio mics, that they could literally just walk in the room and use it. Um, and that was all it was about. And so far it's, it's proven really successful. and I walk around and sort of try and interact. So obviously, just with the mics sitting on the front, you know, there's the not, you know, you're not going to get, you're not going to pick them up all over the place. So obviously, we were reviewing the options for radio mics, but it can become a bit of a pain. Yeah, so I mean, uh, at the moment, none of the rooms we're trialling are quite as big as this. They're a little bit smaller. Um, but yeah, we've put good, reasonable quality, professional ceiling microphones in that have the omnidirectional pickups, so they pick up everything around. And, you know, the results are not studio recording perfect, but they are they're, they're perfectly acceptable for learning. Yeah. And the other thing we're looking at as well is because I, I love high tech, but I, I like low tech interfaces because then it gets used. And so we, we, we've got a teacher education room, which we want to try and use to record observations and for things like that. And a fixed camera is not going to work for that particular scenario. But what I don't want to do is have you know joysticks and people to control it because it never worked. So we're actually exploring um, pressure sensitive ceiling tiles. So, uh, ceiling tiles, floor, floor tiles. Floor. I was going to say, look, walk on the ceiling. Um, 
That was Spider quite Man. a good pint at lunchtime. Um, <laughs> so basically, as, as people walk around the room, then the camera will auto spin and be on them. So as, as someone does that, um, it's, it's great technology. I mean, one of the great things for us is we've got an integrator that works with us um, and we try things out. So we get things on loan, we try it out for three or four months at no cost, and then if it doesn't work, we send it back. No cost to um, <laughs> But until we get the right solution, and it is about the right solution for staff, and it's important about getting the staff involved in the whole process because what I think might be a technical solution, my um, teaching and learning people will say to me, Paul, you're off your head, um, and they'll find something else. So. But I think you, you mentioned earlier about getting students to use these things. Yeah. I think you know, students are using all these mobile devices. They've all got them more than some of us have. And I think giving them the ability to use this and use it easily is, is kind of a key. Um, and, and this Fuse app, you know, you saw a thing with the flip video camera, and most of you probably tried it with HTML. You get the flip video camera, you record it, then you've got to go to a PC, plug it in, go through the process of uploading. And this Fuse app, you don't have to do any of that. You press the record button, you wait, you give it a title description, an hour or two later, and it's in, in the lesson capture folder. Yeah. It's done. It's it, it, yeah, once, once they've got the app there, it's, I mean, you, you can feel free to come and have a look at it when... Uh, One thing you could do now with it is you could set students up to have a different profile so that when they, a student logs on to Fuse, then maybe the content, instead of going into the, the media library, will just go into their user area on the network, just really basic. Um, then they can then pick it up and then upload it themselves into an e-portfolio or edit it themselves, or that you could get them to upload into YouTube, so... Exactly. Yeah, it'll, it'll store it, and then next time it gets an internet connection, it'll upload, it'll upload it automatically. Depending on how you've got it set up, you could restrict that to being inside your establishment, or you could restrict it to just as soon as they get an internet connection at home. Or, you know, I've done I've done them over 3G. I haven't got I'll demonstrate 3G, but I haven't got a signal here today. But yeah, you can do it over there. I mean, it, it re I've, we've shown it so many times now, and I keep saying the red button, but actually in the training, everything we're doing, it is this big red button. But it's as simple as that. I'm now recording what's going on here. If you're going to field trip. You're there straight away. I don't know. You found a fossil. You know. You're there straight away. Stop it, and then it just uploads. Is it actually from iOS? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, any uh, iOS and Android. If you um, cheers. If you uh, made a recording and you kind of you didn't think it was going to be useful, and you just recorded it on you know your your iPhone or your your iPad, and you just recorded it, and you hadn't gone through Fusion. Is there a way to kind of pull videos already on your device back into Fusion? Okay, so if if you've recorded something on Fuse, you, on you Fuse using Fuse, Fuse, Fuse. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, if you've just recorded just something, just generally, you haven't used the app at all, just using, okay. you know, your... Yeah, yeah, so you can on, <coughs> on iOS, but not Android, because Android doesn't allow it for some reason. I'm okay. not quite sure of the, of the reason for that. Um, any video file you've got on your iOS device, there's a simple it upload simple video, oh and, right, cool. and it just does it. Nice, but not on Android at the moment. Yeah. Never do why. Um, it c it c it's, ha it's how you define the profile in Camtasia Relay for that for students for that group. So if that's what you want to do, then yes. Like I say, it is possible potentially to set students to have a profile up so that a student logs on, it could go somewhere else. Mm. So if that's what you wanted. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll just take you through it really quickly then, <coughs> when the internet allows me. Rob. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So, so in, in V2, which I think most of you got looking at earlier on, you've got the bulk upload, which we use for the Omni server for the, for the TV recordings going in, and then we've got the Camtasia Relay NGS. So Camtasia, the server that, that Camtasia has, drops the file onto the Helix Media Library, file transfer, into a watch folder called Camtasia in this instance. Then we state the category it's going to go to. Okay, so it will just automatically, when it encodes it, it will drop that in that category. And that, what that category then can be set up however you define it within the Helix Media Library um, under normal rules at that point.
Thank you.